Hey, this is Dino, and I want to take you through a somewhat more advanced example today, uh, which is how to use Apogee to implement a POP exchange. What's POP? Uh, POP refers to proof of possession, um, which is a way that a presenter, party number one, can demonstrate possession of a key to a recipient, party number two. Um, there's actually an IETF RFC that describes how to use JWT in order to implement a POP exchange. Uh, why would I want to do that? Well, a POP exchange uh, basically allows uh, one party to, to verify or to prove, uh, rather, that uh, that party has a private key. Uh, to another party and then those two parties can uh, engage in secure communications for example uh, the receiving party uh, knowing that the first party has a private key can encrypt things and be certain that only the um, the holder of that private key will be able to decrypt it so uh, pop is a nice mechanism for exchanging keys when uh, the two different parties have a, uh, a, found a shared trust of an issuer of tokens. Uh, and you can read all about it. it. It sounds somewhat complicated, but it's a really nice handy tool. Uh, and it's described in some detail in this uh, IETF RFC. So check it out. What I've done is built an implementation of that exchange using an Apogee proxy. Now, Apogee has built-in policies that generate or verify signed JWT. Based on that capability, they can act as any of the three parties in a POP exchange, either presenter, issuer, or recipient. Uh, so I built an example that shows Apogee acting as both the issuer and the recipient. Um, and uh, there's maybe some interest in that. So let's uh, get into the example. You can look at the, um, the API proxy here it's got uh, just a couple of different endpoints one that acts as the issuer and that's pretty simple just generates a jwt and also returns a jwks um, so that's one uh, and then there's a second uh, recipient endpoint and that's where a bunch of the interesting work happens verifying the um, the pop uh, token verifying the nonce and doing other things to make sure uh, that it's trustworthy the trustworthy to rely on um, the presenter's assertion that it holds a particular key. So uh, let me walk you through that. Um, this, is, uh, this is available on GitHub, so you can go uh, clone this yourself. Uh, just go to this, um, this repo, um, and you can clone it yourself right there. Um, then you can uh, deploy that into your uh, organization. I like to use uh, the tool import and deploy, which is based on Node.js. And uh, what that allows me to do is deploy it, deploy an API proxy to uh, an organization just from the uh, command line. Oh, I'm going to need to, uh, yeah get in the right directory, then we'll deploy it. Okay, while that's happening, uh, let me just uh, flip back to the, uh, to the readme that will show you uh, the steps that you need to go through in order to, um, in order to get this example to work. So the first thing that we want to do is we want um, the presenter to call to the issuer to request a POP token. Now, as I said, Apogee is going to act as the uh, issuer and also the recipient. The presenter is just the command line, curl. And this is basically what we're going to do. We're going to call uh, to Apogee, uh, the issuer endpoint, and say, hey, give me a POP token. Uh, but what kind of POP token do I want uh, to, uh, to get? Well, first, I'm going to want an RSA uh, token and I want to the as the presenter uh, I want to be able to present uh, verify or assert that I have possession of a particular key so I'm gonna call well that's running in the background I'm gonna call into uh, a key service that is available on the um, on the web and that's for demonstration purposes only let me show you what that looks like that's right here 
the JWKS service. Uh, and basically, I'm calling in to get uh, different, uh, the set of keys that are available on this thing. And I can look at the, from this demonstration service, I can look at the pri private key, public key, I can get a token based on that key, uh, and so on. And also, there's an API for that thing. So, uh, so what I've done is called, and I've got um, the, uh, the keys that are RSA. I want that one, so I'm going to say, just set a, a shell variable to that key ID. And then um, I'm going to ask the issuer endpoint of Apogee to issue me a POP token with some claims. Um, the JKU, that is to say the URL for the JWKS, and also the key ID will be like that. So I'll just copy that and run that. And what that gives me is a POP token. So let's grab that and store that into a shell variable too. If I wanted, I can have a look at what that thing looks like. Uh, I'll flip over to this URL that allows me to decode um, JWT, and I paste it in, and I can see um, the, uh, the various settings here um, for the, uh, the claims in the payload. And you can see the CNF claim, which is the, the confirmation claim. All right, so I've got my POP token. Um, the next thing I want to do is get a signed nonce. And I'm going to ask uh, that same service to give me a token using that same uh, key. Uh, and basically, that nonce can be anything. It just needs to be a random number. But let's let's choose something like that. So um, we'll do that. Um, we get the nonce. And that's really just another JWT. So it looks similar to what we just created, but it's different. Its purpose is for nonce. Um, now, when I've got that, basically, now the presenter has two different JWT. One is a, a POP token, one is a nonce, and I'm going to send both of those to the recipient. Uh, before I do that, let me uh, open up Apogee and go into the API proxy that's going to be performing this work as the recipient. Uh, so here's my organization. I'll click into that API proxy, and I want to turn on uh, tracing so that we can see this thing actually work. Um, now I'll flip over into the command line, and I'm going to paste, sorry, not that. I'm going to paste this command. It sends both of those values into my API proxy. Now, uh, this the, the recipient end, uh, endpoint of the API proxy. What's happened is that recipient has gone through a set of operations to verify uh, that the, um, the POP token is good and valid. So we're verifying the POP token. And also that the nonce is good and valid, that the nonce value has not been seen before, that the nonce has been signed with the key asserted in the POP token, um, and uh, after having done, and that the, the nonce uh, lifetime it does not exceed um, a certain value, I think uh, 300 seconds, so five minutes, uh, and that the nonce hasn't been seen before. And we use the Apogee cache for all that. And if all of those checks work, then the Apogee recipient endpoint now knows that the presenter holds the private key that was asserted in the JWT pop. At that point, uh, the presenter and the issuer can, or sorry, the presenter and the recipient can exchange, can use that that key pair uh, for uh, secure communications, and can exchange encrypted data um, with that key pair. So we see that that all worked. I got an OK um, response from the API proxy. If I were to send that again, uh, presumably uh, we would see that the nonce has been replayed because. Um, the cache has been populated. So right here we see, uh, look, we did a lookup. We found that nonce. It's already been seen. So uh, Apogee is going to reject that. Uh, the Apogee recipient will reject that because um, we don't want to allow replays of nonces. So really nice capability uh, within uh, Apogee. The verify and generate JWT uh, can allow Apogee to act as a, um, a issuer. Uh, recipient or presenter in a POP exchange using JWT. All right, any questions on this, I encourage you to go to community.apogee.com. Uh, really nice for getting your questions answered. And until next time, uh, take it easy.